Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot. Where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Welcome home, Brains. There's only one requirement to hang out on the edge, is that you open your big brain and close your small mind. Did you bring your thinking caps? It's time to put them on, because the conversation starts You had a dream last night. Girl, tell me about the dream. I did. I dreamt that I was on the show with you, April. And one of the things that you did was you made everybody have a tiara. All the women on your show, you made them have a tiara. So I woke up trying to figure out where the heck I put my tiara because I do have one. I have one from when I was in high school. I was the Oligo Strawberry Festival queen. Oh my God. Well, you know what? Because everybody is royalty on the edge that's right that's how they're treated yeah, the yeah. yes hey okay female queens and male queens <laughs> that's right that's right any kind of queens and and, and kings we're all royalty and we are all royalty here on the edge thank you so much for being with me donna you are uh you know the business Valesi, is that how you should pronounce your last name? Um, Valise. Valise. donna Valise brains there she is right here yeah. on the edge let me tell you, she is taking LinkedIn by storm. Okay, they love her over there. I've been watching. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. oh thank you. Yes, she is definitely the queen of everything over there. So, uh, you know, this woman here is extremely smart. She's an educator. She has a PhD. She's also the founder of Unity Street Band. I want to hear about that. How are they getting down for the underground? And uh-huh. She's got a great coaching program. So we're going to talk to her a lot about education what parents can do in this environment, because, you know, they may not be homeschooling. Some of the schools have opened up, but the transition, they've been out of school for a year. You know, they don't really grasp it. You know, they have anxiety, social anxiety, and then they got to sit there with the mask on. How do you tell a second grader to keep your mask on when you can barely find a pencil or, you know, behave and not stop talking? So all of this adjustment, you know, she is going to definitely, uh, color in the white space. So help me welcome her to the edge today, Donna Velassi. Hi, baby. Hi there. I, I should say hi, queen. <laughs> <laughs> hi, queen, right back. That's right. Here's to you. There we go. Look at, I've got my cup right here, ready to oh, go, full of coffee. That's right. Well, may your cup run it over with goodness. And yours as well. So tell my brains a little bit about you. Well, brains. Um, I have a kind of a long, uh, long story, but I'll try to keep it short. Um, I grew up in upstate New York. Um, I always wanted to be a teacher, um, and so I became a teacher. And um, as I was in the teaching field, I started to realize that my purpose on this earth was a little bit bigger than one classroom at a time. And so I started. Um, seeking out other roles. I was a technology coordinator for an entire school district. Um, And then I got into um, leadership at the state level. Um, I started teaching some courses um, at the university level. Um, I became a principal and helped open a a charter school and was also principal of a charter school for pregnant and parenting teens. And now I'm a coordinator of educator effectiveness um, for this um, in the city here in upstate New York. So, um, so that's a little bit about me. Um, along the way, I did um, pursue my coaching certificate so that I could coach executives or coach for leadership or um, coach for do life coaching. Um, and so I have that as well. And I train our coaches, I train our mentors in the district that I work in now. Um, the viewpoint that I come from is that everyone in an organization has leadership potential. And the leader's job, leadership is not positional, but a leader's job is to make sure that they bring out the best in others and help them be leaders as well. So that's where I operate from. Well, that is from a place of intention. I love how you were, uh, I want to dial back a little bit and talk about you being the principal of an alternative school for a young, mm-hmm. for a young teen. That can really be a challenge because, you know, there's so much stigma around teenage pregnancy, number one. 
Number two, these young women have the courage to continue their education. Mm -hmm. Number three, you don't understand what the dynamics are at home and what, the, and what the baby daddy is all about, you know? Right. So you had a lot of uh, opportunities there to really change and impact young lives. And I thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. It was, we used to tell our, we, we had moms and dads there at, at our school. And okay. um, the thing with teenage pregnancy is it's um, way over 90% likely that they would drop out of high school. So we provided um, services so that they can make sure they had childcare. Um, we had um, a very alternative one-to-one um, -one computing um, program where we were an all-year-round school, so students could complete their, their diplomas at any point in the year. Um, so if they finished all of their requirements on December 10th, they graduated on December 10th. Wow. If they finished them on April 30th, they graduated on April 30th. Um, so we had the ability to be flexible with their scheduling to make sure they got what they needed to make sure that they had a diploma in their hands um, once they met all of the standards um, so that they could have a successful life and support their children. Um, and yeah, so, so we were um, definitely helping people, some of our young youngsters uh, be able to be successful in the world. To, to travel in that vein of education. Uh, you know, now, like I said, it is topsy-turvy. You know, you've got the executive that has been wearing those red bottoms and that tight pencil skirt, and now she is home with her hair in a bun, and her sweatpants, trying to teach the new math. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> her, her tiara has been tilted, okay? But, <laughs> but give us the, the parents. Number one, give mm -hmm. the parents um, some credit and also maybe some suggestions on just really trying to, to understand their role and responsibility because they're not educators. What would be right. one or two tips that you would tell them just so that they can chill out for a minute? Because it's stressful. I, I think number one, they, we, everybody needs to be able to breathe. Educators are just as stressed as parents. Many of our educators are trying to educate their own students own children at home while they're educating your children um, as well. And so everybody just needs to breathe. Um, you know, this is not the first time in history where we've had little bumps and blips along the way um, with education. It's just the first time in this generation that that's happened. Um, so we will be okay. We will see the end of it. So that's the first thing that I have to say. Um, the second thing is that I think in this past couple generations, um, we've seen less and less, um, uh, you know, parent, parents, I think, are feeling less and less connected to the school and right. pulled away. And this has really ma made them see that their role is really critical. And their role it is especially critical now because they're trying to support their, their, their children and um, keep them on the right track. Um, and so I think just finding resources and, and connecting with your, with your child's teachers to see what resources are out there. And you mentioned um, the new math with, um, you know, <laughs> the challenges with how I math is my, taught. I saw my uh, friend's son's <laughs> math and I'm like, who does that? You know, just yeah. all these boxes and all of that kind of stuff. I don't know who sat on their dumpster. <laughs> and, and came up with that because to me you know the quickest route is the quickest route they don't teach cursive anymore uh you mm -hmm. know spelling is really not an option because they can google everything mm -hmm. uh, reading is off of this device so it's a lot and it's a lot of learning challenges for the little people oh for sure because they enjoy that you know they may complain about going to school but that is the highlight of their day and they've got to sit there with mom telling them, shh, shh, be quiet, don't do this, sit down, do the da 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 and do your work, and get finished, and eat your lunch. You know, you know they are stressed out, too. There's a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, the young um, millennials in high school, there's an uptake, an uptick with suicide. Uh, mm -hmm. so what would you suggest for our young people to readjust and to get acclimated to this new normal? 
I think one of the best, one of the things that kids are missing the most right now is that social interaction. Student, children are social beings. We, we all really are, but when you're a child, you really need that social interaction because that's what helps you learn. And so I would encourage parents to seek out any opportunity where they can encourage that social interaction, whether it's through uh, group Zoom meetings or find a club, even if you have to do it over Zoom. Um, uh, if, if there's um, activities out in, out in your community that are pulling students or children together um, to be able to do so, something together, whether it's making art together or you know, running the field and, and doing like low contact activities, anything that you can do to help support that socialization is really critical. Because even if, if you have a youngster and they're still learning the English language, we know English is not easy. We all struggle. <laughs> Sometimes I think English language is my first and second language. <laughs> you know, and don't ask me about punctuation. I yeah, exactly. That, exactly. That's not, my, that's not my PB and J. Okay. I can. Yeah. I'm a wordsmith. I have a great vocabulary. I can mm -hmm. write a mean poem or a mean story, but girl, don't ask me to edit it. <laughs> that's right. I know. So many of us are like that. You know, and I think also just thinking about if you have the ability to go places. I mean, you don't have to do anything extravagant. If you could go to a museum with, with your child or, you know, drive, go across the city and go to a park and, and take note of things that are happening in the park. Just, just something that, that keeps that interaction even with you as the parent going um, and keeps that language going and the mind going. Uh, will all be helpful started, things. Me and my little neighbor started collecting bugs. Oh, <laughs> you know that, uh, and we collect the bugs, and then we look at them, and we look at them under a microscope, and then we Google them, have a conversation. That's the science project. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I can make a mean mud pie. <laughs> <laughs> but again, like yeah. it's that interaction is is kind of keeping them going. Bring them in the kitchen. Uh, have the math session where you teach them what a half a cup is and two thirds is. Make mm -hmm. that, you know, let them sit there and watch you work and see mm -hmm. what you go through as a parent day to day. You know, yeah. people appreciate that. You could spring up some young entrepreneurs. Now yeah. let's talk to the teachers that now have to be injected because they have underlying conditions. Bless their heart. I love you, teachers. I do too. I love our parents too. That's right. That's right. But the teachers are there. They not only, you know, it was what a year, year and a half ago, they were um, bulletproof shields because they were shooting mm -hmm. at the dunk on schools. Now they're nurses and, uh, you know, fighting a pandemic. Where does it end? You know, the teachers like nurses are quitting the profession. What do you say to them to keep them encouraged? Um, you know, teaching is truly, it's truly a calling and a work of heart. I know, I know saying teaching is a work of heart is kind of a, uh, sounds like a silly thing to say, but so many of our teachers love, love, love our children and they are getting stressed. Um, and so we in the city school district where I work now, we're always battling that and I, battling's not really the right word, but but we're always trying to find ways to really acknowledge the work that the teachers are doing and finding ways to encourage them to keep going and finding ways to support them. Um, we have wellness committees in, in our schools that are trying to bring mindfulness activities to teachers. Um, and just, it, it's such a, a big daunting job. Teachers are like, the only profession I can think of that is similar to a teacher would be a brain surgeon. Like you get into a brain, because one, we're shaping the minds of children. And two, a brain surgeon has to be so precise. And if they make one wrong move, it really can shift things for the patient. But with, with teaching, it's very similar. I mean, it's not quite that precise. There's more, there's a little more art to it, but it's, it can be really intense because you're trying to be everything to all of your students. Um, and, you know, so reach, I, I encourage teachers to, to also reach out to their administrators and reach out to their districts to see what other resources there are. 
encourage your administrators and district administration to, to create partnerships with organizations out there. There are organizations that can help families. And so part of what the stress is with teachers is they carry the weight and the stress of um, difficult situations that their students are going through. And they, they carry that emotional weight with them. It doesn't leave them. They go home thinking about that. They go home dreaming about it. Um, yeah, so, do. Um, so, you know, you're talking about, okay, brains, and I know that you guys already know this, but there could be domestic violence in the home. Some of these children go to school just to get a decent meal. Uh, the mm -hmm. don't have the resources financial, but now we've got some new people in the, you know, in the people's house. I refuse to call it the White House, but in the people's house uh, that are going to be, you know, educators that know mm -hmm. how to read and know how to make correct punctuation and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but they are going to be funneling in some of the support for that because the resources, look at how many kids didn't even have access, much less uh, to the internet, much less have a mm -hmm. So all of these corporations have really stepped up and really donated a lot of things for that. You have children mm -hmm. that have uh, learning disabilities, you know, ADHD or, you know, ABC, whatever the situation may be. There's challenges there. Their parents don't mm -hmm. know how to do uh, and deal with that. My niece works with autistic children, and she was saying what a challenge it is for a special needs, a special needs family. So there is a whole uh, caveat, you know, there's a whole menu yeah. of services and challenges that our families are going through. I want these teachers also to be able to have a support system, like they said, peer to peer, you know, mm -hmm. just sit down and have a, a, a chat, coffee chat and bounce ideas off of one another because we need you, we love you, and we value you. So now we've talked to the parents, we've talked to the students, we've talked to the teachers. Let's play some music. Let me hear uh, about the street band you got. Tell us about that. Oh, uh, well, Unity Street Band, we are now a nonprofit organization. Our mission is to put joy back into the community through, um, I'm sorry, to put unity back in the community through the joy of music. Um, so street activist street bands, um, there is a whole community of them across the world and across even our country, the United States. Um, and we gather together at honk festivals. Um, so you can Google brains, use that Google tool. Um, Ooh, okay. and I got you. Oh, I didn't know that you played the flute too. Um, I do, I play flute and piccolo. So in the street uh -huh. band, I play piccolo. And um, so our, our, or in our group, we will play at community events and um, we've, we've been invited to play at someone's like birthday party who was a big community member. Um, we'll play in parades, we'll, put on shows and sometimes we just want to play. So we'll go find one of our parks, our local parks in Syracuse and, and we'll play right in the park and people walking by are always, um, it's always an unexpected joy to see a band playing. We even during the summer months, well, we can't today cause it's snowing, but during the warm months, um, we actually hold our rehearsal outdoors at a park. Um, and the, the idea of breaking the barrier between an audience and a band is incredible. You can get in people's faces, you can get them to interact, you can get them to dance, you can hand them a tambourine and they can participate with us. Um, and people don't, most of America doesn't play an instrument. So even watching the process of, oh, you're not always perfect all the time. There's a process behind learning. One of the great things that we do with Unity Street Band, we have beginners. We have a 12 year old who plays with us. We have someone who wanted to play a saxophone. He's, he's in the sixties or seventies. He bought a saxophone. He took lessons he had never played before. We, so we have people who are beginners all the way up through people who are professionals. Um, and then people like me who put their instrument away for way too long and wanted to take it back out. Um, and so we have the ability to help 
people learn their instrument, but also push our professional musicians to rethink how we could do things and rethink how the arrangement of something is, or if somebody has an idea of, I wish we could do this over the top. We look at our professional musicians and we say, how do we do that? Right, um, so, right, right. So it's a great organization that uh, and music allows is a great growth. equalizer. Yes, you it know, always you is. Stop what you are doing to recant where you were at this particular time when you heard this love song or you know what was the the style of the 70s what were you wearing at that particular time or you know the the feeling that you get when you hear a real you know real cool jazz song or blues. Mm -hmm. so do you play all genres of music um we do some latin music we do a lot of new orleans styled music and um i i even several years ago learned how to improvise on the piccolo i'm trying to get better but i never thought i could do that um so pushing my own boundaries has been really great um and um you know we do some pop tunes we do some mashups of things uh we really um, we really just try to play some things that that people will move to. They'll it'll yeah. touch them in some way and connect people. Um, and so one of can I tell the most powerful one of the most powerful stories I had while being in a street band? Yes, please. Uh, all right. So years ago, I actually was I was living out in Connecticut and working in Providence, Rhode Island, and I was with a group called Extraordinary Rendition Band. And we went to one of the honk festivals down in Austin. Um, and one of the first places that we played was outside of um, a homeless shelter. And when we arrived there, we were taking our instruments out of the cases and people were lined up um, outside of the shelter. Fights were breaking out. They were screaming at each other. We had someone come up and start getting right in our faces, yelling at us, I thought you were supposed to play for us. When are you gonna play for us? Mm. And it was a little unnerving. Um, so we continued gathering our stuff up together. We crossed the street and we started to play and they kind of kind of tucked us into this corner where we couldn't really get out and those, these people surrounded us. And um, all of a sudden as we're playing, I realized, there's no more fighting. Oh my goodness, look at that. There's a couple cameras coming out. Oh, I see somebody smiling. Oh, those two people are dancing together. Oh, now they're all dancing together and they're like enjoying themselves. And the police officers who were breaking up the fights were able to lean up against a pole and take a deep breath and sigh of relief. Um, so the fact that music has the power to totally transform an entire um an entire feeling of a, an entire group or a situation and transform it into something so positive had the most powerful impact on me and so no matter where i go if there is not a street band for me to join i will start one because we need more of this in our world we there are enough people out there who who play who put their instrument in, in the attic and really should just get brought back out. Take your instruments out, play them, find, find a group because, um, or start your own band because well, you music know, is powerful. Lessons. And I, I started taking guitar lessons and I kind of fell off a minute, but again, I'm gonna take your encouragement. I'm gonna pick her up today and uh, I'm gonna get down because it was really good. It was really good. And my teacher was really proud of me too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but reading music and keeping the time and trying to sing, it's not for chumps. <laughs> yeah, no. Hey, Brains, we got to check up on April Mahoney in a, in a few months and see how far she's come. Hey, all right, now she done put me to the test, okay? <laughs> you got it. Now, you have created and concocted a recipe for success. You work with teachers, you work with parents, uh, you work with students, and you bring it all together with music. But what you've done is you've mixed it in a bowl and now you are a coach. Tell us a little bit about your coaching program and what you're pouring into people on a deeper level. For yeah. So, so through all of this, through starting organizations and, and leading organizations and being a leader in so many different situations for um, in, in education, what I have come to realize is that 
a leader can make or break an organization and a leader can make or break a person um, based on what they do. And so I've really taken a lot of time to study and try to understand how to best lead and develop people. I consider myself a human developer. I've kind of given myself that terminology. And um, so I, I've developed two things. One, I, I do some leadership coaching. I've had, I've had some opportunities to coach people both inside and outside of education. Um, some, some of that coaching has been in turnaround work where they're trying to get a, a school or an organization turned around. In others, it's startup. And in others, it's we've got uh, an organization that is just solid and we're kind of stuck. We're, we're not sure how to, how to move forward and make what we do even greater. Um, and so that's where I come in. And so I have two things. One um, is being launched this week. It's a free quiz. Um, it's called How Empowering Is Your Leadership? Wow. All right. And so leadership is really about empowering others to take ownership of everything that they do and see how it's connected to the greater good. Um, and so I've de developed a transformative leadership continuum. Transformative leadership is, is really a set of skills that really helps inspire and empower the people that you're leading. Um, and so in that continuum, when you take this free quiz, um, you, will, you will be one of four things. You will either be a rookie, which really means perhaps you are just starting out in leadership and you really haven't had much training or you're in a leadership position, but nobody's ever really given you training. Mm. And so you still have some, some growth to make. And that's not a bad thing because you don't get in a leadership position by doing nothing. You get right. in a leadership position because you're good at your work. Right. And so my role is how do I help take a leader and make them um, in, an incredible leader? Mm. Um, and so, so rookie is number one. Producer is number two, and producer is really someone who is managing things, just making sure things happen the way they're supposed to happen. Not bad. There are managers in the world. We need managers in the world. But if you want to take that to the next level and be a little bit more transformative, the next two are pathfinder and revolutionary. If you're a pathfinder, you're able to take lead a team and facilitate collaboration like nobody's business. Um, and collaboration is really where people are all on board and your role, you might be adding to the conversations um, and all your team members are, but you're making sure that everyone has a piece in, in the pie. Um, and when you're a revolutionary, you're able to kind of, that is the most transformative work. And that is where you have done the planning on the back end, you're facilitating all of the work, but your team has been taking leadership of, of all of the work with you just kind of facilitating where they're going. And that allows you as the leader to have more time to do the visionary work to figure out where your organization needs to go. Um, and so, so that's, those are the outcomes of the quiz. Once you, once you take the quiz, um, I offer a free consultation so you can dig deeper and understand your results better. Um, and I also provide a free goal tracker that you can use with anyone in your organization or all of your organization. Well, you so know, that's I want to tap. I want to tap into uh, really quickly into a couple of things that you uh, said. So I was trying to assess where I was in this process, and I'm a producer. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a producer. I'm a little bit of a revolutionary too, but I like the input of other people. Mm -hmm. I, really, I really like that. And one of my mentors told me something I will never forget about leadership. He says, April, I want you to be a bridge that carries other people safely across. Yes. And Brains, you can't be a leader if you've never been a good follower. Right. Okay. Because there has been people that have come before you and will surpass you. Uh, mm -hmm. They'll never be on the same page. Some of y'all not even reading the same book. <laughs> yeah. I'm just keeping it 100 and everybody is not a coach you know some mm -hmm. people are still trainees so you have to get in where you fit in and be authentic with that it's okay to continuously learn it's okay to be a part of a team you don't necessarily have to lead but what she what is I'm hearing Donna say anyway is that you can lead right from the position where you are 
You don't have to be the CEO. You don't have to be the chair of the PTA to really be a strong leader. You can be effective in your community. You can be effective in your small circle. You can be an influencer. You can be a change agent. You can be a producer. Am I correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. 110%. Um, yeah, I, I believe every person can lead and you might lead differently in different organizations you're involved in. Right. There might be one organization you might not be super comfortable leading, but you're willing to be an active participant. That is still a type of leadership. That's right. Some people like to lead from behind. They don't want to be seen. So when you think of all the people, if you think of the theater, all those people who are making all the things in the background happen, but you never see their faces. Right they're still leading in some way they're making things happen and every single person has the yes. ability to change a life and change the world i love to say the support is not a one-legged stool yeah, yeah. And, and if you ever need help being a change agent i'll be your number one fan okay. just give me a call you are always my number one fan. So tell my brains really how to get in contact with you, Donna. I love for them to yeah. do a little deep dive. Go in, brains, and take the assessment, take the quiz. It costs you nothing, yeah. but it can afford you everything. Because a lot of times people don't even know who you are. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And in these tenuous times, this might be an opportunity for you to springboard uh, and go into a totally different direction. You know, if you were a teacher, maybe you want to go into administration. Uh, if you're a parent, maybe you want to be more of a classroom parent. You know, maybe you want to learn how to play the piccolo. <laughs> oh, there we go. I can help you with that one, too. <laughs> exactly. So tell my brains how to get in contact with you, wonderful. Well, there are a few different ways. I'm on LinkedIn. If you just search for Donna Valise um, on LinkedIn, I'm there. Um, I'm also on Facebook. Um, you can find me at Donna Valise, or you can also find me at Inspiring Leaders, INC. Um, and if you want to go directly to the assessment um, and try out the assessment, it's um, www.inspiringleadersinc.com. And if you want to go right to the quiz, you just add the backslash and type quiz. Um, and it'll take you right there. Um, um, one other thing that I am really looking forward to is at the end of March, um, I am going to be launching a six week transformative leadership boot camp for people where we will meet together once a week. Um, and I will take you through a whole series of what it really takes to get the whole picture of how to develop your transformative leadership leadership skills. It starts, there's three I's. If we can remember the three I's is imagine, invest, and iterate. And that would be the process I would take you through. You will imagine what it is that you want your organization to be able to do, what you want your people to be able to do, and take it, assess every nook and cranny of how things are operating so that you can get that vision across and make plans for it. Mm. invest if you don't invest in your people right. they will not invest in your organization and so so I talk through how you give feedback on a regular basis how what are the keys to giving feedback what are the keys to being able to coach your people so that they take ownership of the work that they're doing um, because just telling them what they've got to do is, is not enough. You have to be able to coach them and provide feedback. And so I go through the process of how you do that. And, um, and then the third piece is iterate. And iterate is really about how do I identify the data that I need to know where my organization stands and how well we're doing? And how do I use that to set goals? How do I use that with the people who are working for my organization and have them set goals as well and have them buy in. And this whole process is cyclical. And so in that six week boot camp, you'll have opportunities to learn pieces, but also you'll have, there'll be homework assignments where you actually take things back to your organization and you try some things out and you bring them back and you share with the group so that you can get feedback from people of other organizations who are doing the same type of work. 
Right. Um, so it's designed to be a really powerful boot camp. Um, I'm look, really looking forward to it. Um, but if you want to find more information, again, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, and I have that website, Inspiring I'm Leaders all of Incorporated. You are- I'm going to put all of your information and all your links there. Uh, We're going to share that because all of this is the fourth eye impact. Okay. Everyone wants to be an influencer. Everybody wants to be an influencer. But if you are just meeting on the meeting to see what we're meeting about, you are not doing anything but being annoying another eye. (laughs) (laughs) So here we go. Uh, Thank you for being here on the edge with me, Donna. I appreciate you. I value you. Dr. Donna, okay, I'm gonna give you all your props because <laughs> you deserve that. Thank you so much. Thank Come you back so much. Again. Keep us informed. Keep fighting the good fight. You know, the kids, the families, and you know, people at large are really worth the investment. And I'm glad that you are a broker for humankind. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on here. And thank you, Brains, for listening. If you ever need want to get in contact, just even to have a conversation. I'm your girl. All right. Be well, brains, okay? And know that you are the thinker of your thoughts. We want to be leaders that are going to carry other people safely across on the edge. Thank you. Bye, brains.